Hi everyone, today I'm here again with my sister Belle and we thought we'd do another get ready with me. This time we're going to be using our magic palette from Juvia's Place. We both have it. I gifted that to her for Christmas and this one was a gift to myself. And we thought we'd also discuss things we'd like brands to do in 2018. Not just releases, but I guess on a more general... I suppose it's more about what we where we want to see the industry going. Yes, that's a good way to put it. It's particular brands. Belle's already done her base, so I'm a, I gotta catch up a little bit. Mm. And this time we've got a bit of a different setup because I think last time the, the light was coming in weirdly. So we're kind of a little bit on an angle. Sorry if you're like my sister and don't like looking at people's backgrounds that aren't perpendicular. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I look at it really weird in my, with my hair pinned back like that. What color scheme are you going to go for? Um, I'm not really sure. I think I kind of want to hit the pink and the purple. Mm -hmm. Kind of the mattes. I've used every single shade in this palette. That's so good. I, I have not touched my palette except for swatched it. It's really bad. It's because every single time I get a new palette, I always make sure to use every single color before switching it out of my I think it's a really good thing to do like that's a, I think that's what I should be doing making sure that I use every single shade which is a goal for this year is to actually use more of my makeup and rotate my palettes let's talk about what we'd like to see or how we'd like to see the industry moving towards this year we were discussing this before and it was kind of like we want to see brands focus on their main line a bit more this um, this year rather than limited editions yeah there's just way too much limited edition stuff and on top of that I think that quality is sometimes compromised for like gimmicky packaging that is you know limited well um, I just think it's kind of a shame that all the limited edition releases are drowning out all the permanent releases that are actually being marketed and you know improved on I think brands need to be more confident in their permanent edition items Natasha Denona bringing out the sunset palette that was received really well and she decided to make that permanent and then when the Leela palette came out she decided to make that one permanent as well as a kind of like here are your staple what we think a purple palette should be well I suppose another way to look at it is also that there's so much competition now there's so many makeup brands technology is improving so rapidly brands really need to stay on the ball when it comes to like improving formulas Kind of like makeup forever they're redoing their eyeshadows even though they already released them and they already actually have pretty good eyeshadows no like yeah but they're so confident that they can improve on their formula i think it's really admirable i agree i think that i would like to see more brands doing things like that i'd like to see kat one d do a permanent colorful eyeshadow palette i think a lot of people have been harping on that for years because she's got shade and light which is her neutral palette but then she's a brand that is known for her colorful eyeshadows, like limited edition anyway. She's notorious for releasing a lot of limited edition. And to be honest, none of the formulas or nothing that I ever purchased from Kat Von D really blew me away. Yeah, I'm the same as well. I, I <coughs> have done a 10 wears using the Metal Mattes palette and I just, I don't really like the formula. But yeah, like Too Faced, I think they do so many limited edition as well, like Too Faced also. It kind of puts me off ever trying any of their permanent line. I know, I've actually... I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's a lot better than their limited edition stuff. The only thing I've ever tried from their permanent line is the Too Faced... Shadow Insurance. Yeah, Shadow Insurance. But I've only ever used their limited edition eyeshadow palettes and I decluttered the one I got in a Beautylish Lucky Bag from two years ago. I didn't think it was fantastic. Actually, this year I didn't... I ended up not buying the Lucky Bag. Really? I gave my code to mum instead. Wow. What else? What else? What else have I written? This time I've written notes so that we are more on track because last time we were just like all over the place. <laughs> I would like to see brands continue to bring out uh, larger shade ranges like Fenty Beauty, but I want to see other brands follow suit and I want them to bring out not only a large shade range, but also a greater amount of undertones, not just yellow. I think because people who have olive undertones find it difficult. And I think it's good to be inclusive. I think drugstore brands like Maybelline and all that are notorious for, you know, having such a limited like shade five range. shades. Asian wine. Yeah, I mean, they have a better shade range in the US, but I don't think we get it. But even if they don't bring in stores, I feel like they should still allow people to purchase them online. Or at least have them in larger price lines. Yeah, yep, yeah, I agree. Because there's no excuse for that. Especially those kind of brands with the funding. Maybelline, Rimmel. L'Oreal, 
all those brands that have been established to bring them out. There's no excuse. We live in such a media and image driven society now, especially with social media being like having such quick access to new information. Mm. I think brand image is so important in this day and age. And even if there isn't the market for a lot of deeper skin tones, just catering to that cohort in general yep. says a lot about a brand. From a marketing point of view, from a brand image point of view, it's actually really smart to do that. Yeah, I agree. Because I think even though like a lot of people weren't necessarily big Rihanna fans or anything like that, I think the fact that she was so inclusive with her shade range really gave her a lot of kudos and really made people want to try her brand because she was doing that. Do you find? Yeah, well, I'm not a Rihanna fan and I haven't bought anything from Fenty Beauty yet, but I really admire what I've seen so far. Yeah, and I want to support brands that do that. So good on her. And, and tying back to our first point, I think Fenty Beauty is also really focusing on the main line that they release slowly. Yeah. So they, I think everything, like releasing everything at once, they really like perfected the formula and they're only releasing certain permanent products in increments. And again, I, sh I think that shows a lot of confidence as well. Um, you tell people what your brand's about, not you let the people dictate how you release things. And it's like the whole voting system with trend mood and stuff. It's difficult to please everyone. Exactly. And if you try to please everyone, you'll end up with, with a really crap product, really bland. And that's really obvious with the trend mood Ciate palette. That is a train wreck in the making. What else? I want to see more diversity with things like ad campaigns and um, brands using their social media platforms. I was looking at things like the Makeup Loft by Maybelline and it's like everyone's skin tone is light and medium. Where are the dark skin girls? Where are the really, really fair skin girls? And also where are the people- Where are the Asians? Yeah, where are the Asians at? I want to see brands catering more towards the ability to customize and depot products. So a good Example of this is how tart blushes have a little hole at the back mm. and they're magnetized so you can pop them out and put them in a Z palette But it doesn't compromise the actual packaging of the product. You don't have to destroy the product to get yeah Because to get it out. I am so it bad in. at depotting like I just depotted <clears throat> I don't use heat because I'm just lazy mm. uh, And I destroyed my Viseart eyeshadows. I'll never depot them ever again But it, how easy would it be if all palettes were magnetized and you could pop out all the individual shadows? That'd be great like it would if, definitely stop you from having too many multiples of the same shades. Exactly. You can travel with them per gram. It's more cost effective to buy a palette than a single, but it'd be great if the palettes were depotable so that they can then become singles and you can mix them with your other palettes and your other singles. Yeah. And like pair different colors together across different palettes without having to like pull out three different palettes. Yeah. Like I guess I see more brands doing <clears throat> that now, like Viseart's doing that, which I is mean, great. The thing that I noticed about the Juvia's Place palettes is that they're the exact same size as the Sugar Pill Pro pans. And I just thought, how amazing would it be to be able to pair your Juvia's Place palettes with your Sugar Pill palettes without having to pull out those massive palettes? I would also like to see better collaborations this year and collaborations that don't hike the price up a lot because I feel like, you know the Maybelline and Gigi Hadid palette? $45 <laughs> in Australia, that's absolutely ridiculous. We don't like Gigi that much that we would pay the premium for the palette. It does not make sense. I surely brands can afford to get that, or if you can't afford Gigi, you know, maybe get someone else. I just don't think. Yeah, you know what I think happened? I think that during negotiation with their contracts, Gigi kept pushing for more, for more, for more, and no one wanted to make the executive decision to just say no. They just like kept giving her what she like the money that her agents asked for. And let's let's be honest. But do you reckon Gigi really not. uses Maybelline eyeshadows? Yeah, no one at no Maybelline one actually like put their foot down and said no. It's not viable to have Maybelline products at this price. In the end of the day, you got to think about your customers. Your customer base are people that buy Maybelline because they like affordable makeup. So if you're asking your customers to buy a forty-five eyeshadow palette, you're really not gonna get them to buy it. And that is why everything looks to be still in stock when I'm looking at the Priceline website. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's selling that well. It won the worst collaboration of the year, I think, didn't it? Maybe oh, from Beauty News <laughs> Awards. And rightfully so, because it's that was stupid. I mean, <laughs> you've got you to remember your audience. 
Same with the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette, although I think people still were happy to pay the additional amount, but I think you've got to be really careful there. I suppose the thing is, they still have to turn a profit, you know? And these collaborations, they have to pay a certain amount to the collaborator. Yeah. And so it really just comes down to negotiation. Mm. And how much did they negotiate? Yeah. And no one was actually thinking in, on, in terms of the large picture. The only thing I bought from a collaboration last year was the Desi and Katie collaboration. I think that was a decent collaboration. I'm not actually a big Desi and Katie fan, but like I think that they brought out products that really reflected the influencers style and aesthetic and they didn't put up the price by too much. Talking about overconsumption and collect large collections, I really want to see well, it's not really makeup brands that would be doing this, but I'd love to see homeware and furniture brands catering more towards um, makeup organization. Yes. Um, we were discussing before about how IKEA has such a great opportunity to be producing all of the insets for those Alex drawers. I know. And they could do it at such a low price because of the economies of scale. I mean, they're producing s millions of items of stock. And you have to buy them on eBay or Amazon or something. Yeah, I feel like they're really, they're missing that whole market. But even more aesthetically pleasing and upmarket makeup organization solutions. Yeah. Like more vanity options. Yes. Not just Alex drawers, because every room tour that you see is Alex drawers. Mine included, yeah. which is why I haven't done one, because you're gonna see everything that everyone else has. I've got Muji acrylic drawers, and I've got those Alex drawers, which is boring, but it's cheap and it does the job. I have a huge problem with my vanity setup at the moment mm -hmm. in that it's in the bathroom and you keep saying that it's bad to put makeup yeah, in the bathroom. Do not put your makeup in the bathroom if you want it to last because things will get moldy and things will but just I, not last. I live in an apartment and so it, there's no space to do anything. Yeah. There's no space. I can't even put a desk there. And I feel like even a... if I have a desk, I don't want to have my makeup on display in my living room or in my bedroom because in your bedroom, you want to be able to sleep easily. You don't want to I feel like there's an art to um, living in an apartment and making the most of the space that you have. Yeah, so having a vanity with storage, makeup storage that you can, that completely folds away and closes itself and looks, you can't see anything. But that's not really the makeup industry. I suppose the makeup industry could be making like small makeup organization solutions. Like, like I can imagine like beautiful palette organization that you can display that's made brass. This is a wish list thing that might probably not happen because I don't know how, I think Australia probably doesn't make a massive chunk of the market, but I'd love to see more brands offering free shipping to Australia or at least free shipping over a certain amount. Like I was pretty impressed that Linda Holberg, given that she's a pretty small indie brand, offers free shipping to international countries over a hundred US dollars. That's really good. Why can't, why can she do that and Pat McGrath still charge 25 or ABH charge $18? I think it's mostly, um, shipping restrictions. What, Sweden has better, like, yeah, it has, every country has its own, like, shipping restrictions and the post office is the one that, um, or the governmental post office is the one that dictates how much, what the price of everything is, because it's all, um, it's not privatized. So how did Beauty Beautylish get such good shipping terms? I um, don't know. That's what I'm saying. I think like they, they must, there I is think something they have to, to put it. more money into it. I think they're... Yeah, put more money into it is what I'm saying. <laughs> then I'll buy more. I will buy more. Glossier don't ship internationally. Yes. And I'm not interested in Glossier anymore. I was interested in them last year. I know, then it's not like, last year, uh, even the year before. too hard to get. That is a good segue to what I wanted to mention, which is I would like to see department stores and you know shops like Sephora and Mecca bring out more brands things like Glossier, Bosha. I'd love to see Pat McGrath in Sephora so that I don't have to go through the Charlotte website. Charlotte Tilbury would be great. Too. Yes I mean there are so many brands that we don't have that I would love to see in store to be able to swatch and everything. I think that would be really nice but yeah. I'm gonna go get lipstick. We've pretty much done our whole face and we didn't talk about anything that we put on, sorry. We'll list it in the description did box. Did you list it last time? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I'm using a lot of products that are in my project pan and I can't wait to show you my progress because it's, it's really good. 
So, <laughs> I'm gonna need cheese products that were almost finished. But, you know, sometimes I need that extra push just to get me over the line. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all the points that I wanted to make. Oh, I wanted to also say that I feel like there are too many, yeah, just too many releases this year. <laughs> I can't keep up. But I guess it's, 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 I mean, I guess it can be a good thing because that means that at least there's something for everyone, I guess. I don't know. New product fatigue. Is that a thing? Yeah. Brands like Colourpop bringing out so much stuff. I mean, they're expanding their, like, I like to see them expand their base range. Like the concealers, I think, were a good move. Uh, moving into pressed eyeshadows was a good move. But they do do, a, like I said, a lot of limited edition releases and it can be too much, I feel. And I think really that's that's all that we wanted to cover. <clears throat> do you have anything else that you wanted to? Um, I think this is mostly an Australian thing, but also, but greater access to samples and better award systems yes. for Australia, Sephora and Mecca. I um, think Mecca is not too bad. Then again, on the flip side, I feel like if you're not going to buy something for full price or then you never really wanted it much in the first place. I think minis are better to try things out as well as buy things at a more affordable price. Like save a bit of money and get a small amount. That's fine. I don't mind, but you know, I don't mind paying less for less. So we finished our faces kind of off camera because otherwise this would literally be an hour long video. No one wants to listen to us ramble for one hour, so here it is. And Belle was saying she reckons that it's more successful than our sugar pill one, which, yep. yeah, I have to say, I like this look a lot more. So since it's your first time using this palette, what do you think? I've you heard mean? some pretty mixed reviews on this palette compared to the other ones. Like I heard Makeup Struggles doesn't like this one. Um, and yes, some of these mattes, they're definitely not the best, but definitely they are workable and at least they go on pigmented. They do go on a little bit buildable. patchy. Yeah. yeah. So you do need to take a bit more time than, um, some other formulations, but I actually quite like them. I, I think that the shade range is quite nice. I feel like I could create a pretty nice look with it. Mm. But what, what do you think? Cause you've been using it, you've used all shades and... You've been using it way longer than I have. Well, the only Juvia's Place palette that I have besides this is the Masquerade one. So yeah. that's what I'm comparing it to. Yeah. And I like this a hundred times more than the Masquerade palette. Why? Because I think it's just personal preference. I think shades, tints, and tones of color suit mm. me a lot more than pure color. Can I say one thing that kind of annoys me? What? The packaging though. What? And this is just purely from a design point of view, so it might just be me. Why? I'm sure it's not just me. Okay, like, what, I'm sure other people, but <laughs> it annoys me that the the marketing image for this has the night on one side yeah. and the sun on one side yeah but then the shades down here are split with the night on the bottom and then the daytime on the top right like shouldn't it be symmetrical <laughs> well maybe next time we should. <laughs> I don't know. honestly i don't think anyone i never noticed that ever. <laughs> oh well that's life isn't it anyway that this is the end <laughs> <laughs> really random conclusion <laughs> this is the end of our video and um we've rambled a lot but hopefully i can edit it in a point to the point where it actually makes sense at what we're saying because <laughs> sometimes we are just very i mean this is a very tangents. informal video yeah we go on lots of tangents and yeah it's just a bit of fun playing with makeup and just talking about makeup so anyway hope you are having a happy new year wherever you are and um, I'm sure we will see you again soon because I'm going to try and bring Belle into as many videos as I can because I, I think it's fun. I guess it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>